We now move to item number 10 on the agenda, which is the joint Auckland Council, Auckland Transport bids for uh, the Transport Agency's Innovating Streets for People pilot project. Um, to get the resolution on the book, if I can again ask uh, uh, Councillor Bartley and Councillor Darby to move and second it. You happy to do that? Yes. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Uh, and we've got a range of people here, um, and including Adrian Young Cooper. And Adrian, I know you have to get away. Um, so um, I'm not sure who was going to introduce the paper. I think um, Robert Simpson. Are you on the line, Robert? Uh, I am, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, but I think Megan will introduce it, and I'll come in a little bit later. Thank you. Um, I'll get Megan to talk to the paper, and then, uh, given the time frame, uh, maybe. Uh, um, Adrian Young-Cooper might like to speak quite early on in the piece as well. Um, Megan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, this is really just uh, introducing uh, Adrian, really. So uh, we will uh, talk through um, a slide pack for you about the report and the resolutions. Uh, but given that Adrian needs to leave it too, uh, I'd just like to open the floor uh, for her to speak. Thank you, Adrian. Adrian. we better check. We've got you there first. Are you there, Adrian? It would be a good idea if I started by unmuting. Um, <laughs> You're not the first to have done yeah. that. Yes. In the course, okay. Welcome. Uh, and um, thank you, um, uh, councillors, for um, having having us here today at your at your emergency council meeting. I've just got a couple of things um, to to make in opening, and then uh, there is a very good presentation that's been prepared uh, by Auckland Council and Auckland Transport. Uh, so, look, I realise that uh, for some of you this has been a very fast process to get a list of projects to go into the um, funding round that uh, uh, NZTA uh, Wakato Kotahi have opened up for the Innovating Streets Fund. Uh, this, is a, um, this is a fund which has been there only um, very recently, and, uh, and the, um, uh, it is does follow on quite a bit of work, in fact, that was led out um, by the ADO at Auckland Council, where they were able to demonstrate that if you got in early and did some tactical urbanism, you could, in fact, achieve uh, a number of the design uh, outcomes you were seeking without going to the full permanent uh, solution on day one. And it was also able to be used as a way to demonstrate and trial um, certain kinds of new approaches. So this, um, this first set of projects, which has been worked on by uh, Auckland Council staff and AT staff uh, and also Panuku staff, uh, has actually ar arisen out of a very rapid process to ensure that uh, when the first funding round um, applications close um, for, uh, next week, uh, that Auckland does have a series of complying projects uh, in for the funding round. NZ, uh, NZTA is not um, uh, guaranteeing the funding of any of the projects that we've put in. There is a, there is a request uh, to all of New Zealand, so it is a competitive process. But it is something where we have tried to uh, show our um, agility and, and our ability to think differently as to how we might deliver some of our existing programs much faster. So there is a bare outline of the uh, various projects. They're all, as you'll see, relatively low value, but we hope high impact uh, to be able to demonstrate um, a new way of, of getting into some of the issues that um, are facing various parts of the region. And they sort of range from um, temporary uh, speed mitigation at Medicana Village uh, through to a very uh, low cost, but we hope highly effective roundabout that can be laid on the road at Waiuku. Um, slower, actually doing some temporary slower speed uh, work at Ranui um, at the town centre, um, and actually picking up a couple of schools for a pilot project around both active modes, but also making the actual um, school entries themselves safer. All of these projects, um, if, they are, um, if they are funded by NZTA, Wakato Kotahi, 
they will um, then go into a more refined process working with uh, members and local boards. So um, it's a little bit um, um, a little bit round, um, not not quite the way that we normally operate, but if, but this is the nature of this uh, innovating streets fund. Uh, it, it's, it's it's wanting to have uh, new um, sort of new types of ways of thinking about some of our projects. Most, uh, not not all of these, but um, uh, th those which are very successful um, in this uh, tactical urbanism approach. Will, they are actually um, in the various programs of uh, Panuku Auckland Council and um, uh, AT, and so they will. It, it, it will then provide um, a basis to be able to then go go and make the um, the long term capital investment, with obviously all the learnings that have come through the tactical um, the tactical phase. And in some cases, there'll be pilots, which are then used um, for other kind, you know, like for the, um, the the Safer Schools program. So they were the, the only comments that I wanted um, to make. And uh, thank you very much for the time to make these opening comments. Thank you very much, uh, Adrian. Um, I think if we begin the presentation now, I understand uh, um, that Robert, uh, you and Greg are going to lead the presentation. Um, I also understand that uh, Councillor Bartley, you've um, you've sent a copy of the uh, of each of the projects to the local ward councillors. Um, so we, you know, obviously will be influenced by how how the local ward councillor feels about the uh, uh, the proposal for his or her area. Um, but let's begin with the the, the presentation, and then we'll uh, we'll go to a joint uh, question and comment session. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert. Are you leading off? I am. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, uh, yes, my name is Robert Simpson. I'm a member of the Transport Strategy Team here at the Council. Um, so, if you could just move the slide along, please, um, Sandra. Thank you. Um, so, just a quick outline of what we'll be talking to you about today. So, I'll briefly start with an introduction to um, the NZTA Fund, what it is they're looking for, um, some of their processes. Then I'll hand over to Greg Bassam and Hamish Bunn from Auckland Transport to take you through the round one projects and the process by which they, um, by which those projects were chosen. Uh, and then back to me again to talk you through the proposed process and the proposed round of engagements that we have, as well as our assessment criteria for round two projects. Uh, next slide, please. Sandra. So uh, before I do um, get into that, it's just very important to make this distinction. So there are two clear elements to the uh, NZTA Innovating Streets for People Fund. It is the tactical urbanism side, which is how the um, fund was originally conceived, which there are two funding applications. Uh, the first one is due tomorrow, and the second one due in early July. Um, in addition to that, there's also, um, as the COVID crisis deepened, the, fund, the, the remit of the fund was broadened to also provide for uh, to, to help councils um, address the immediate needs of that fund to, en to enable social distancing and so on. And we've seen um, a, a number of measures that Auckland, Cal Auckland Transport sorry, has put in place over the last uh, week or two, um, and uh, they, I understand, are putting together a package um, to apply to NZTA for uh, for cost recovery for some of those those projects. So just to make it clear that today we're talking about the tactical urbanism element of uh, the fund, not the COVID-19 emergency responses. Uh, next slide, please, Sandra. Thank you. Um, so, uh, as I say, um, you're probably familiar with the term tactical urbanism, um, but the fund is all about helping councils uh, deliver more people-friendly streets that uh, improve safety and encourage people to spend more time in those streets and, and, and encourage walking and cycling. So it's, it's very opportune given um, uh, one of the few upsides, I suppose, of the recent set of circumstances that, is that a lot more people are out and about enjoying, enjoying their neighbourhoods, whether that's on a bike or, or, or whether walking. Um, this fund gives us an opportunity to put in place initiatives that, that, that can help build on that momentum, can help um, uh, cement some of the behavioural changes that we've seen recently. But the fund requires us to do things a bit differently than what we would normally do, as, as the Chair of Auckland Transport has just alluded to, um, using the, 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 the tactics of uh, the, sorry, the techniques of tactical urbanism. So, so generally this is the rapid rollout of relatively low cost projects, generally on a pilot or, or temporary basis. Um, 
the uh, co-design is a key element of, of tactical urbanism. So co-design in terms of um, working across disciplines within organisations such as our own and, and, and our CCOs, um, but also, most importantly, with the community as well. So bringing the community along with us, um, getting the community to, uh, involved in the, in the planning and design phases of projects, and then being flexible in how we deliver stuff and, and, and how we um, and being prepared to change as, as we go along. So it's definitely not a business as usual approach to project to delivery that, that's been encouraged through this fund. Um, uh, as I've mentioned, the, the projects are intended to be temporary of nature, but NZCA has made it very clear that uh, uh, they are looking to see a pathway to permanence for these projects. So in other words, they're looking for these projects to be uh, kind of a trial run for more permanent solutions. Um, and, and, and they will enable us to test key aspects of those permanent solutions. So what kind of lessons can we apply, can we learn as we go along, and, and, and how can we apply them as we roll out more permanent solutions? Um, and, and also, uh, by doing it this way, it's, it's, it's kind of a form of consulting by doing, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's a, uh, a good way of potentially getting the community on board and, and saving costs a bit further down the track um, uh, in terms of knowing what works and what doesn't. Irrespective of whether the projects are funded for the first round or the second, they're expected to be delivered by June 2021. So that's next year. Um, so so that, that is a key criteria that NZTA has, has made clear to us, um, and, and that's something that we have to be cognizant of uh, as we move through our own processes to select projects to put forward. Uh, funds are relative, uh, sorry, um, projects are relatively small in scale, maximum of $1 million per project that NZTA will, will provide funding for. Uh, and here's the really attractive aspect of the, um, the, the program, and that NZTA will provide up to 90% uh, of funding for successful projects, which still means that we have to find a 10% local share, and so that's going to be a key criteria for our projects, um, and I'll, I'll get to that soon. Uh, another important thing to note is the thing I've got down the bottom there, that only road controlling authorities and approved organisations are eligible to apply through this fund. So in Auckland's case, that means AT and Auckland Council. Um, so any other CCO or external stakeholder who would like to propose a project uh, is unable to do so themselves, but must go through, um, uh, through our joint application. That's AT and AC's joint application. So that's a brief introduction to what um, NZTA is, is uh, hoping to achieve through this, uh, this, this program. So I'll now hand it over to Hamish and Greg, who will take you through the, the first round process. Uh, thanks, Robert. Um, so yeah, I, I think what uh, the, the program's all about has been very ably uh, captured by Robert and, and our chair. Um, just to emphasise that what we're putting forward in round one is the technical urbanism projects. It's not about the emergency response to uh, COVID-19. Those those have been put in place, um, and the, uh, our first round application has really been uh, the ready-to-go projects that were already in development and support uh, a lot of the other longer-term or, or pieces of work, such as around safety and, and active mode. So they're really uh, supporting those strategic outcomes that we're after. Uh, these are temporary outcomes, uh, uh, temporary initiatives, um, uh, following in line with the kind of piloting and testing. Um, we're expecting implementation within six to 12 months. A key feature here, absolutely, um, is that there'll be engagement with local boards um, and community uh, co-design is a key element. That's what we want to do. It's a core part of a tactical urbanism, and it's also something that NZTA themselves has emphasised heavily uh, in terms of what they're expecting from these projects. Um, and of course, as ever, uh, we'll be working um, with uh, Auckland Council staff, including the design office staff, as we have previously in things like the High Street project. Um, uh, and particularly for the bigger uh, projects that are involved here, such as the, the Queen Street uh, Access for Everyone type trial. Uh, so now I'll pass to Greg to talk about the specifics of the projects. Thanks, Hamish. If we can just move on to the next slide, I'll go into a little bit more detail around those 12 projects. So like I say, we are looking to submit 12 applications to this fund. It's worth noting that we have got a 
pretty good geographical spread across Auckland with um, with these applications. Um, where there are some gaps, we'll look to address those as part of the second funding round applications. So just to move on to the projects, we have got three projects related to schools. Uh, two of those are related to specific school pilots, and they're really looking to work collaboratively with the school staff and parents from those schools from a co-design perspective. And that's really looking to test elements and pop-up events before any permanent uh, solutions are looked to put in place outside, uh, outside those schools. There's also the School Streets program, which is looking at five potential schools, whereby it's looking to focus on how the environment outside of, our, outside of all the schools can be improved uh, from a safety perspective, but also trying to um, enable that mode shift for people who use the school, so parents uh, dropping off kids and uh, children accessing the uh, school as well. In terms of those five schools, one of the schools has been um, would be would be uh, the Point Chev School, um, should the funding application be successful. And in terms of the other schools, the project team is looking to put out expressions of interest uh, to all Auckland primary and intermediate schools, and they will be selected based on criteria such as whether it's in a suitable location to do treatments and what the potential community buy-in would be from those schools. The Point Chev School has been chosen uh, as a similar Similar initiative was run last year with that school, and it was very successful. So they're looking to continue that uh, in, 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 next year potentially. The next slide, please. Uh, we then have uh, six safety-related projects. Uh, four of those projects are related to town centre improvements. So we've got those listed there: so uh, Ranui, Otara, Matakana Village, and McCreary Way. And it's really looking to make treatments in, in, in alignment with AT's Vision Zero approach. So that's really looking to improve the safety of active modes and making those, those areas a lot more uh, walk, uh, friendly for walking and cycling as well. It's worth stressing that these applications are really are looking to test uh, the approach um, from a tactical urbanism perspective, and that would lead into that permanent design. It's also worth reiterating again that these projects would, would be very much a co-design uh, process and involvement with the local boards as they're developed should their application be successful. We've also got two of our safety projects related to Collingwood Street. So this one is looking to address safety impacts as a, as a direct result of increased traffic volumes. And this came uh, directly from uh, a residence meeting, uh, a request from a residence meeting. We've also got a roundabout trial at Waikuku, uh, and that's looking to address the speed issue of the intersection there. Uh, and that, again, that came from directly from the Franklin Local Board. If we could just move to the next slide. The final lot of projects are city centre related projects. I understand councillors might, might have a good overview of these already. But the first one is looking at Cook Street. Uh, obviously, that permanent solution has already been out to consultation, so this tactical urbanism treatment would be testing kind of those permanent solutions, and again, there would be a core design aspect of, of, for that. The other one is looking at the Queen Street Access for Everyone pilot, which again came from the, directly from the planning committee, and that's looking to pilot that um, before the March 20, uh, 2021. And finally, the last project is looking at Winyard, the Winyard Quarter, and that's looking to test treatments uh, in association with the transport strategy for the Winyard Quarter, and that's really in, in response to a few things, uh, most notably the America's Cup, so looking to put in treatments for the America's Cup, but also there's quite a lot of settling infrastructure going in um, around the Winyard Quarter, so it's looking at treatments to accommodate um, for those cycle treatments and the increase in cycl uh, cyclists in the Winyard Quarter. So that's an overview of those 12 projects. I'll now pass over to Rob. Thanks, Greg. Uh, next, uh, thank you, Sandra. So this is a diagram that uh, you will have seen. It was included in the uh, pack. Um, that we sent out on Tuesday afternoon to committee members, but just to walk you briefly through it. So this is the, the proposed process that officers have come up with over the last week or two um, to try and get everyone involved in the, um, in the round two 
process and the, and the, the, the process of identifying and assessing projects to put forward to NZTA. So there's three distinct phases to this really. First phase will take us up to the 25th of May uh, and this is uh, if you like the initial engagement phase um, and the collation of project proposals. The middle phase to the 4th of June is, is the decision making phase where uh, local boards, the governing body and the AT, Auckland Transport Board um, will get to um, uh, make decisions on, um, on the projects that we put forward um, for, for, for funding. And that last phase from the 8th of June is where we get into the, the working up the detailed applications for each of this, the, the, the projects and this is quite an involved and potentially technical phase. It will take quite a lot of work, um, hence the, uh, the, the time that we've uh, allowed into it. Um, it's important to note that um, elected members uh, will um, have the opportunity to, to have various touch points where they have uh, formally uh, engaged uh, throughout this process, but also um, particularly the local boards uh, will have um, uh, other informal opportunities to input into the process as well. So let's, I'll quickly take you through um, each of the phases. So the first phase starting uh, either tomorrow or Monday um, pending uh, approval of this process um, from yourselves today, uh, we intend sending out uh, an expression of interest form uh, and an assessment criteria to um, uh, departments right around Council and, and the CCOs, um, uh, particularly to the uh, Independent Māori Statutory Board, to uh, uh, Ngā uh, Matarai, um, uh, and, and seeking their um, uh, proposals for projects that could be included uh, in, this, uh, in this second round application. Um, uh, running alongside that will be an engagement both with local boards and a target engagement with, with external stakeholders. So the local board engagement at this, this point, um, we will send um, a, a memo to local boards uh, on Monday next week um, uh, requesting two things. One is kind of localised strategic direction for each of their areas. What is it that they would like to see happen through um, this fund and, and, and um, also inviting them to submit um, a proposal for, for one project and it won't have to be a fully worked up proposal at this point. Um, we can do that and we can help them with that um, uh, as we move through the process. Running alongside that, um, AT is leading on targeted stakeholder engagement um, for that initial week or two. We get to the um, decision making phase, um, so sorry, um, once we get these proposals um, uh, it'll be up to the project team to, to collate them um, and organise them by local board area, put them to the local boards and give those local boards an opportunity to provide feedback. We will then use our criteria to um, undertake some kind of prioritisation exercise um, and offer some kind of assessment uh, and then put that to uh, this committee or, or its equivalent, whatever's in place at that time, uh, in early June um, seeking their approval uh, and also the AT board seeking their approval on the 3rd of June. And as I say, once we're past uh, that point, uh, then we'll continue to work with local boards, with the IMSB, with council departments uh, and with external stakeholders to work the um, proposals that we decide to take forward um, into, uh, into their final application format. Uh, and as I say, that is likely to be quite a technical exercise. Uh, next slide, please, Sandra. Uh, this is actually just more uh, a more more detailed um, uh, picture of that process, so we can actually probably skip that. So, um, so next slide, please, Sandra. Thank you. Um, so just to reiterate, these are some of the key features of, of the proposed process. The engagement with local boards, as I say, memo going out next week, we're asking them for strategic direction, and they have an opportunity to propose projects, provide feedback on all projects in the area, and that will be a key input into the prioritisation process. External um, stakeholder engagements. Um, uh, so AT has coordinated that in the first instance. Um, generally we'd expect um, their feedback to go through local boards and, um, uh, and council departments and so they'll help shape projects as the application is developed. But um, equally importantly, probably more importantly, um, our external stakeholders will be key during the planning and implementation stage for any projects that we are successfully able to obtain funding from NZTA for. As I say, Governing Body AT approved projects in early June uh, and in time for a July submission to Waka Kotahi uh, NZTA. And next slide please. Okay, so um, uh, one of the other items that we sent out to you on Tuesday afternoon um, was the um, proposed criteria um, for 
um, uh, the prioritisation process that we will likely have to undertake, because we do anticipate quite a large number of pro project proposals coming through the expression of interest process. So the criteria, um, if, if, if you have it before you, you'll see the, um, um, you'll see the, the um, kind of tick box process that we have there, um, uh, and, and the other aspects of the EOI form. Um, let me just get back to it. Right. So that criteria covers everything that the NZTA has asked for uh, in their formal criteria. But in addition to that, we've added some some considerations from Auckland Transport and and Auckland criteria, and that enables us to cover off some of the broader Auckland plan outcomes um, related to uh, Maori outcomes specific, uh, uh, specifically, um, both in terms of design of projects and also in terms of um, uh, improving access to Marae uh, and so on, uh, and providing improved transport access, um, particularly active transport access in areas that, that, um, that, that Māori uh, particularly use. Um, there's an additional criteria around safety that we've added, around transport equity, around mode shift and around low carbon, uh, and also um, a more procedural one around building community support for parent projects. So all of that is reflected in the criteria that we sent to you on Tuesday. And uh, uh, next slide please, Sandra. So uh, thank you very much. That's that's it in terms of our presentation. So we do have a number of, of staff here, and I'll, I'll just quickly run through them so you know where to direct your questions. So in addition to those you've heard from, uh, we've also got Paul Buckle from Panuku Development Auckland, who will be able to answer your questions in relation to the three Panuku projects that are going forward as, as part of round one. Uh, we have Mark Maxlow and... Um, uh, Liz Nichols from Auckland Council, uh, who are uh, who are uh, co-leading the project management side of this over the next two months, and they'll be able to answer any detailed questions you may have in relation to the process that we've put forward to you that I've ex ex explained at a high level to you. Um, so uh, that's it from me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Robert, um, and thank you also uh, to Hamish and Greg. Um, that was a pretty clear explanation. Um, just to reiterate, this is about tactical urbanism, it's not about the COVID-19 emergency response. And what we're being asked to do is first of all endorse the application for the first round that's due in tomorrow. That's been time pressured. Uh, secondly, we have to look at the process for the recommended package for the second funding round and the criteria. And then noting that uh, staff will come back before the second round application goes in. So can I suggest that um, we run questions and comments together, uh, that we start with the mover and seconder uh, of the recommendations. Uh, so, And then I'll run through the, the list in, in roll call order. Um, so Josephine, would you like to lead us into this one? Um, OK, happy to. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I don't have any questions, uh, um, but I do have um, something to say about this. Do you want me to do it now or wait till... Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, do, do the two together, yep. Okay. I really wanted to, to speak to this and move second. I, I'm not sure because I see up there that that um, I'm seconding it, so all good, whatever. Um, but um, I wanted to do this not because I'm Deputy Chair of Planning, but because of one of my local constituents, Krypton Mate Kualava, a 40-year-old dad who um, was hit uh, when he was riding his bike to go see his daughter at Tamaki Primary, and he died as a result of that. So it is so important that we do make our streets safe for everybody that's using it. So that, that is why I really wanted to support this work support the proposals that are going up, uh, and, and hopefully uh, other councillors do too. I also wanted to speak about process, and I thank the officers that have spoken and all the officers that are involved in this, both from Council and Auckland Transport and Panuku and the Auckland Design Office. Um, but I think like these kind of uh, projects, hopefully it is successful in the bid, really do make a difference if we all work together and are on the same page. And you can do that and still be agile. And really appreciate having the Chair of Auckland Transport, Adrian Young Cooper, on the call as well. So councillors, you will see that round one, there are 12 projects. 
um, from Auckland Transport, well, put up by Auckland Transport, three from Panuku. Hopefully you will have had some oversight or knowledge of these because they're projects that are already on the, the books. Um, and, and for our councillors, I did uh, manage to get a hold or email uh, those councillors that have these projects in the award um, yesterday uh, because we got the list on Tuesday that was sent around at 2.07 p.m. on Tuesday to councillors. But it's important that we, we know these projects, we know that they're being put up because it would be good if we champion them. It's, it's in our communities uh, and, you know, we've got the Transport and Council um, officers there. They know their stuff, but we know our communities. Um, and understand, totally understand the pressures about getting these proposals ready for tomorrow. So acknowledging all the work that's been undertaken to, to put these up as our best bet to be approved by Waka Kotahi uh, NZTA. Noting round one and round two are separate, so the earlier physical distancing work carried out, by, carried out by Auckland Transport. But again, just wanting to say the importance of all of us, you know, working together on this councillors, IMSB, local boards, um, you know, Transport Council. So for round two, there is an inclusive process that has been proposed for councillors' consideration, the closing date being the 3rd of July and noting that the final decision will be made by a council committee. So to end, I think I just want to say during lockdown, you know, you can't help but notice all the bubbles out there walking and riding their bikes on the road. It's awesome to see people using the roads together. And if these projects that we put up are successful, then that will help make it safer for people to continue to do so. So i um, very happy to support this, um, Mayor, and I hope um, we can get councillors' questions answered and and, and see this come through because it is an awesome opportunity. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. Uh, Councillor Darby. Thanks, Mayor. Just a couple of questions first, then a brief comment. Um, Robert and Hamish, um, probably just outline this, this might be a bit of a su suggestion that this is Auckland transport led in the absence of Auckland Council, but can you just outline the role of the Auckland Design Office uh, here and other council departments um, in pre preparing this um, application? And also just reflecting on the strategic plans like City Centre Master Plan, Access for Everyone, City Centre Advisory Board concerns over Cook Street. Um, just a quick, quick summary of the strategic directions that you've taken and then uh, arrived at this implementation plan. And that's the, the second question while I'm at it. Is there potential for local boards to augment the 10% that we might be um, providing, or we, we will pro be providing, uh, to, to leverage an even bigger project? Could they, could they come in and um, utilise their transport capital fund to get uh, a bigger, an even bigger bank for buck. Then I'll comment there. Thank you very much. Uh, Robert, are you going to lead the answer to that? Or? I can have a go at the second question, but I, I, I think um, Auckland Transport is probably a better place to answer the first question. So the, the second question pertaining to the, um, can local boards use some of their funding to augment 10% um, local share from councils? Um, yeah, there, there is no, uh, Wakatakotahi hasn't um, put any particular um, constraints on where that source of local funding comes from. So whether it comes from uh, a governing body pot or a local local board pot um, is uh, uh, doesn't matter too much in terms of the um, the um, uh, application itself. I suppose the one constraint is, though, of course, is that the, the one million cap on uh, on on a specific project. So um, what we do over and above one million, so long as we meet that 10% local share from whatever source um, we choose, um, uh, that I suppose that's up to us. So if we choose to um, provide more than 100,000 on a one million dollar project, then uh, then that's that's our decision as a uh, as a unified council organisation. I hope that answers your question, uh, Councillor. Thank you. Um, now, is it uh, Hamish or Greg would like to address the the first question? Um, yeah, so I'll come in. Uh, certainly, um, 
there is, I think, a great deal of coordination here. I mean, you're, this, this first round of projects you're seeing, um, you know, they have come from Auckland Transport, which is mainly because we've just had the lead on a number of, of, of these projects. Um, but uh, as you pointed out, um, you know, a number of them, such as the, the Queen Street pilot, that's that's clearly been a design office and, and council led, and, and uh, now we're picking up the implementation side. So, uh, an enormous amount of coordination in that space, um, and we expect that to be ongoing as we as we do the project development um, for those things that have been uh, hopefully will be approved and endorsed in round one. Um, in terms of some of the drivers, you'll see a, a very strong uh, safety driver. Uh, so uh, some of these are, are a practical outcome of, of us implementing uh, some of the speed bylaw changes uh, and other aspects there, and also following a, the, the priority to get more mode change and, and safer trips for walking to, to schools. So uh, I think those are very much in line with the overall direction of council policy there. Um, and then in terms of ongoing uh, coordination, I think you can see very strongly that uh, we're planning for a combined um, uh, Auckland Transport, Auckland Council process and, and putting together the, the next round two, um, where we've got a little bit more time to, to do the thinking and uh, even deeper kind of coordination. But absolutely, yes, uh, um, we're very much keen to walk, work with our council partners in delivering these projects. Thank you very much. Thanks, Hamish. Robert and, um, and Hamish. I really appreciate that. Mayor, just a quick comment. Um, look, I really appreciate working with um, Deputy Chair of Planning, Councillor Bartley. It's, um, I've been trying to just hold back that Pacific energy of uh, Councillor Bartley's. Uh, there's been so much of it in the last week. She's really taken this one on and uh, wants to get the very best for her community, but not just her, her locally. Tāmaki, Mangakeke community, but right across Auckland and get this right. There's a huge opportunity here. I can't help but think that, you know, we've seen the multi-billion dollar shovel-ready fund. Now we're seeing a, a few million um, for a people-ready fund. And Associate Transport Minister Julian Guetta has really come up with a smart one here, I think. It's relatively low cost and it invites creativity a lot of creativity and a raft of innovative ideas will come out of this. Um, and it's all about making way for people on our streets in a very different way, and we're ready for it. Um, it's, it does enable a faster and easier transition to that, more enjoyable streets as well as just being safe. Um, and High Street has shown us the way on that. We know that uh, we've done our hard yards and we've learned a lot, a lot of lessons on High Street, but we've got there and there's an incredible love affair happening with High Street. Um, the funding is not to be sneezed at here. This is for every dollar we invest, we get $10 of delivery. You can't sneeze at that one. So let's grab that. Let's seize this moment and, and take Auckland forward on the back of the lockdown and how habits have changed. Uh, and habits certainly have changed. We've seen tens of thousands of Aucklanders, mums, dads, grannies, kids, siblings, etc. Um, wobbling away in bicycle seats like never before uh, in neighbourhoods. So let's build on that habit and lock that habit in and take it forward through this. Tactical urbanism, uh, Mayor, you use it, I use it. It's a bit of a technocrat term, isn't it? But essentially it's about getting creative and inventive. And um, it's about curb build-outs, you know, it's pop-up bike paths, car calming around schools, lower speed limits, uh, play Street programs, uh, I, I coined it Slow Sundays, and that is part of this program as well, and communities and local boards can apply for that. So uh, let's take this one. It's a huge opportunity that beckons for us. Uh, take the success of High Street to all the high streets in our local centres. And uh, with the rapid increase in online retail in the last six weeks or so, our high streets, our local centres are going to need to find a, a, a point of difference. They're going to have to anchor people, bring life to centres like never before, because there is a challenge which is not going to be reversed, and that is um, the strength of online retail competing with high street retail. So let's get on with it. Uh, Queen Street Valley, uh, we thought we'd be doing this next year. There's the possibility now 
will be bringing forward the pedestrianisation, at least in part, of Queen Street this year. And uh, Aucklanders have been thirsting for that for a very long time. Sorry, um, I'm not. I'm not hearing Chris at this stage. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm having trouble with um, my connection here. Um, look, thank you very much, um, Councillor Darby. Um, <clears throat> it's now in councillors' hands whether they want to be here till four or to uh, six o'clock tonight. Um, but everybody has the opportunity to speak and ask questions. But in the interests of um, getting through our agenda, I'd ask you to be uh, concise again, please. I'll run through the, ro the roll call. If you don't need to speak, because it's been said, um, uh, you know, I'm very grateful if, if you don't uh, need to take up the call. Uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you to the Chair of AT for heading this up. My only comment is this is localism at play. It's coming to fruition, and it's great news. Thanks. Well done to all. Thank you. Setting the scene for brevity. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Casey. Thanks, Phil. Two questions. What do we mean by approved organisations that can ap apply for this? What is an approved organisation? What's your definition? We have an answer for that, please, um, Robert or, or Hamish. It is a term that's used in the LTMA, Land Transport Management Act. I don't have the exact definition to hand, I'm sorry. Um, but um, to, to, to use less technical terms, um, basically it's, it's councils um, right around the country that are able to apply, and one or two additions to that. Um, Auckland Transport being the obvious one here in Auckland, um, and I understand um, Waka Kotahi has currently got a, um, a looking at uh, making Kainga Order into an approved organisation as well, um, uh, so that they can submit their own application here in Auckland rather than piggybacking off the back of ours. So uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the LTMA um, definition to hand. Someone else may, but but, but I don't. I, I think that probably answers it anyway. Uh, Councillor Casey, second question. Yeah, I just had. Uh, thanks for the um, the email yesterday from Josephine. I I, um, I re looked at the email that you sent round, but um, the Point Chev School project wasn't in there, so I'd love to more, know more details. Delighted that Ubaraka schools get going to be made safe, but um, if you could let me know a bit more about the Point Chev School project, I'd be very happy to receive that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do officers want to address that now or, or directly to Councillor Casey? Robert? Uh, excuse me. Um, I'll look down to that. Yeah, great. Yeah, um, I'll pass that on to our community transport team, which, which are, who are directly involved in our project, and get them to contact you directly on that. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, Councillor Collins, I think, has given his apologies, but just a double oh. check. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, I've been able to come back. Thanks, Mayor. Oh, okay, thanks, Fesso. Uh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, just a couple of comments. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, really grateful for the for the presentation and, and the uh, emails that have been circulated. I just wanted to uh, thank, really, uh, just thank uh, Councillor Bartley and Chair Young Cooper. I think over over the last few months and even into the end of last term, I've heard Councillor Bartley talk a lot about her experiences as a local board chair and the communications and engagement level she's had with Auckland Transport. Uh, she's been very honest. She's been very blunt about uh, the engagement process and uh, the level of communication. And I wanted to offer my thanks to her because she sent around an email uh, that prefaced uh, a further a paper that was coming round that I hadn't seen. And so I just wanted to say that that was, for me, it's really important that just the odd highlight or, or just someone kind of mentioning something to be aware of shows her desire for better collaboration amongst councillors so that they're able to input on, on behalf of the communities that they represent. So uh, my personal thanks uh, to Councillor Bartley for making that happen and to Chair Young Cooper who called me earlier this week just to highlight the Ōtara bid that had gone in as well. Uh, and I know that 
that uh, not all of us have been communicated with, but I think those small actions just uh, raise awareness, they highlight them in our minds, and then we're able to come back with ideas. And just finally, um, we, I received an email for, in response to Councillor Bartley's communications with us, and he, she also emailed the Chair of Ōtara Papatoi Toi, Chair Lotu, who came back and said, look, I didn't even realise this was on the table, but I'm grateful that you've come back, you've contacted us, and we really support something that's already been on our radar, but now can be pushed through through Auckland Transport. So I think that level of engagement and communication is really important. And so my thanks uh, to those two people uh, for, for, for modelling uh, that kind of engagement. So that's all from me. Thanks, Mia. Uh, thank you, Councillor Collins. Uh, Councillor Coombe. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a question before I'd like to speak in support. Um, my question is... Um, Obviously, this is really um, great to take this forward, and it, but it is quite a small package of improvements when we think across Auckland how many changes are needed to make our streets safer. So I just wondered if Auckland Transport are actually gearing up for some complementary measures and putting them in place as fast as possible, particularly the safest speeds, not just the package that's being consulted on, but what's what's being lined up to actually roll out um, far more safer speeds, and also looking at areas where we can just make interventions without needing funding. For example, where we've got pinch points where all that's needed is, say, removing some car parking and putting in very cheap um, separation to create um, safer cycleways or pathways. So that's my question for Auckland Transport. Uh, Hamish or Greg? Uh, I believe we have Andrew Allen on the line to, who can probably address um, some of those more immediate operational uh, questions. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, no, if Andrew's there, please go ahead, Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Coombs, thank you for the question. Yes, um, we, we will continue as we have with the emergency works that have gone in, uh, and I appreciate that's not the purpose of this presentation. But as with those works that have gone in, we continue to look for opportunities to address the sorts of issues you've just articulated, pinch points and other safety issues that we detect or pick up on the network. And we will continue to, to implement measures Probably not on, on the scale or with the speed that that first tranche of measures have been implemented, taking a bit more time to engage with uh, local boards, but certainly with uh, a, a very strong intent to focus on addressing operational issues as and when we encounter them on the network. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Pippa, you want to make some brief comments too? Uh, yes, please. I would like to very much support uh, us making these applications because there is huge demand for safer, healthier and people-friendly streets. And this fund was being um, lined up before we even had the crisis, but I think the COVID crisis has really brought it into focus just how much where people are given the chance to feel safe. They will get out there on their bikes and walking, scootering. Um, just in terms of that demand, I'm sure the councillors for Albany are very aware that 3,000 people signed a petition to make Oteha Valley Road safer for cycling. Um, but there's lots of indications right around the region, and I'm really pleased that this is a regional spread of initial projects. I've come from a local board that has been advocating for tactical urbanism for almost 10 years now. Um, and it has been quite frustrating that as a council family, we are very slow to do things. And particularly where it has been addressing safety for our most vulnerable people. And this, this fund really allows us the opportunity to try out things quickly, lighter and cheaply. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that in terms of why we really got to seize this opportunity, Opportunity, And it is just making the applications. I don't think we need to get too kind of, we can't get too excited because it is only the application. But if these are success, successful, um, not only do we get significant funding 
and hopefully will push us to do a lot more and progress a lot of projects that we already have underway. But it also allows us to try out doing things in a much less expensive way and try techniques. And I think that's what we're going to have to be doing a lot of cost savings going forward. And this is a way that we can roll out safety really, really quickly. Um, and hopefully, if we can get these trials in, seize them, then it will actually demonstrate that we can get a lot more bang for buck by using tactical urbanism across the region to really make a, a network of safe walking and cycling. And it's so important. Um, so I do support this um, initial applications and the process and us making as many, you know, um, accessing this fund as much as we possibly can um, because I think we're just going to see huge benefits and it's going to be really exciting to see the rollout of a lot of projects that are already um, in the planning and we can see them happen a lot sooner than we were expecting. So thank you councillors and particularly Councillor Bartley for, for really pushing this along and making sure everybody's across uh, what is a quick process, but we absolutely have to grab it. So thank you to you both, and thank you to the team who are progressing these applications. Kia ora. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Cooper. You've got a question on Ranui, I see from the yeah, side it bar. It was just in general, as um, Councillor Bartley was talking about championing this, but it seems it'll be the local boards that'll be doing this, and... Um, you know, often we get a bit sidelined in this area. It would be really great to understand what is meant and what is actually going to happen because I know for Councillor Henderson and I, we have both been co-chairs of Rānui Action Project. We know the area very well. We know, we also know very well what we did in Waitakere City to create that as a village just by putting lights in and building a library. And it really does need more work because we've had people run over quite a bit. Um, in there, people go too fast. So what I really like is not now, but um, if we can be sent through any kind of plans or what is proposed, because there's nothing much in what we got. I did ask, but um, it'd be great to know and to have a little bit of a look at it, because I don't think we'll get to make any decisions on it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Cooper. So um, I think um, it'd be quite important if. Uh, if officers can get back to Councillor Cooper and Councillor Henderson just with some details, I think it's really important that uh, that our ward councillors know precisely what's being proposed in, in, in each area. Um, Councillor Angela Dalton. Thank you, Worship. Look, I just I support these projects and I'll heed your call for efficiency and take my questions offline. Thank you. Thank you. I'm enormously grateful for that. Uh, Councillor Alf Filipina. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Look, I've got a few questions in, and then a comment if that's okay. Shall I ask all the questions all at once? Yes, please. Okay, the, the first question, can you confirm that the first round that uh, has just gone through was from uh, beginning of April to uh, the 8th of May as per the agenda? Uh, yes. Um, and in regards to consultation, the only time we ended up getting uh, any information uh, in regards to that initial stage one uh, was really Councillor uh, Bartley in regards to the projects that have been now put up? Uh, yes, that, that's right. I mean, some of the projects I understand have been discussed with um, um, local boards and, and, and others earlier. Uh, for example, the, the Queen Street ones um, as a result of access for everyone. But uh, yes, in terms of this particular package, that's right. Okay, and, and, and uh, look, I've got two more questions in regards to the criteria that um, and the process for the uh, second round. What difference is there in regards to the first round that we're, that you've gone through? with Auckland Transport? The, uh, sorry, it's uh, Robert Simpson here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the, uh, I, I suppose a major difference is there's, there's 
more time. And so with the second round, we have been able to come up with a process that does involve engaging with yourselves, local boards, IMSB, external stakeholders, and so on, um, uh, which wasn't really possible, uh, as far as I understand, with the first round. So um, uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. You wish I've got one question, last one, and then I've got comments. Um, has there been any political interference in regards to the projects that we have now in front of us? Uh, um, Hamish or, or Greg, are you, you're involved in the process. Are you able to answer that one? Um, the, um, I, I, I'm not sure what we might mean by political interference, but no, the, the, the list of projects was generated internally um, based on what we had available that, that met the criteria and the intention. Um, so that, that's where it came from, and we're looking for, as part of the second round with a little bit more time, uh, a wider engagement process. Okay, look, um, uh, thank you for that. Your Worship, um, when I first saw the list, um, I ended up uh, having to look at it and thinking that it's all the majority was city centric um, and, and, and there was a token gesture in regards to Otara Papatoitoi and, and in the south, um, hence the questions that I've had. Um, I know that there was a month in regards to this first particular round, um, but I thought that would have been uh, enough time to at least contact those uh, councillors uh, and, and local board um, chairs in, in, in those respective areas to happen. Um, I also uh, want to congratulate and, and thank um, Councillor Bartley, uh, one for your email and, and keeping us in the loop. Um, I contacted um, the other local board chair in our area, Lemonga, Lydia Sosini, who obviously didn't know anything about the process and that, that was also confirmed um, by Councillor Collins in regards to Chair Lotu Fully. Um, Your Worship, I, I hope and I don't know whether uh, the Chair of Auckland Transport is still on the line because I don't like mentioning her name if she's not, but can some people tell her that, um, or somebody tell her that there's two councillors in the Monaco Ward and I would have appreciated uh, a contact as well. So Chair, I, I will be supporting these. I'm going to uh, ensure that the process leading into the second round is, is what I'm hearing does happen in regards to consultation with our local boards, especially in our local board areas. My only um, question mark I have is around the risks that have been identified in the agenda, and that is around that 10% um, when um, the government are looking at 90%. So that's, that's really the, the, the issues I have, Your Worship, but I will be supporting them. And to Councillor Bartley for Tele Lover. Thank you, Your Worship. Can't hear you. Sorry, I'll start that again. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. Um, look, I, I think one of the reasons we've got set out here the process for round two is that it will be much more thorough in terms of its consultation with ward councillors and local boards in a way that perhaps time constraints limited in terms of round one. And I, I regard it as absolutely essential, you know, particularly with this concept of co-design and community ownership that councillors and uh, and local boards and the local community are involved in this so that there is um, broad support for the initiatives that are being taken. Um, but I do, I, I do appreciate the time constraints uh, for the first round. And I think, um, yeah, there's, there's a, a bit of a bias towards um, the city centre, but we have got projects right across Auckland which I, I think are, are quite good. Uh, Councillor Chris Fletcher. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's exciting to look at new initiatives. I launched the walking school bus from Awairaka School 20 years ago, so um, some of these ideas are, are not new. But I, I do have a, a word of caution, um, and I think it's been expressed by others uh, today, and that is in the Mount Albert community, 
they're still up in arms over the upgrade that was undertaken, and I think they're probably going to be very suspicious um, of of any. <laughs> it might not be. Uh, it, it might be a completely separate and distinct project. But I would have appreciated one of the officers within the Auckland Council family having contacted me with regards to the community that I represent. I, I am grateful to Josephine Bartley for contacting me yesterday, but that was the first contact I've had. And we've got, as I say, quite a bit of opposition in the Mount Albert community for um, things as a result of some problems that came out of the upgrade. And I, I just think that we're, we're in a hiding to nothing if we, if we can't even take our own councillors with us on these sorts of things. So I um, feel, feel quite frustrated, and I would really appreciate uh, some explanation as to why a telephone call to the, one of the ward councillors uh, couldn't have been undertaken um, on this occasion. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, look, I, we, we've got our officers online from both Auckland Council and Auckland Transport hearing the message, and the message is uh, pretty consistent, um, that the expectation is uh, around uh, a closer involvement of the ward councillor uh, or, or councillors and the local boards um, so that we do get community buy-in. I, I think that's incredibly important. and. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy if um, either Auckland Council or uh, Auckland Transport just want to comment on that point. It's been raised by a number of councillors. Uh, we're all very grateful to the fact that Josephine made sure that uh, councillors were uh, aware of what was happening in the awards. That was critically important. And thank you again, Josephine, for doing that. But uh, perhaps we, we, could, we should have some comment from uh, Council or Auckland Transport just on the processes that were followed in, in bringing this list forward. I mean, I know time was a factor, but uh, it would have been great to actually at least uh, emailed or contacted uh, people directly. So I don't know, Robert or uh, Hamish, if you want to just comment on that. Um, yes, yeah, so look, at, uh, I don't think there's much I can do other than apologise uh, for us uh, not being in contact um, with these projects. Um, yes, we, sh we should certainly have, have uh, realised the extent of the impact um, and, and uh, ensured that we were at least doing the, the basic courtesy of, of getting in touch. Um, I think we've been focused on putting the package together um, so, as I say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that there wasn't better consultation as part of this. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think that is a lesson to draw from this, and obviously with the process set out for the second round, uh, that's not going to happen again. Um, uh, IMSB member, To Henare. Uh, no, no, Your Worship, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Shane Henderson. Uh, Kia ora, thanks Mr Mayor. Look, I just wanted to quickly reiterate um, Councillor Cooper's call for information and, and if we can get that as quickly as possible, that would be totally awesome. Um, and the reason for that is, goodness, we need some good news right now um, and especially uh, the Ranui Town Centre in particular. And I have to say I was absolutely delighted to see that in the uh, project list. Uh, and also just to commend the project list itself, it's a beautiful, good spread of projects all around the region. So. Well done. Uh, keep it up, and can't wait to hear from you. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Richard Hills. Yeah, I just want to commend um, everyone who's worked on this. I wish there was um, projects in my area, but this is a regional uh, list of projects, and they're really good, and I hope it continues. 90% from government is pretty massive. We couldn't... We, I guess we could ask for 100%, but I think no one um, sneezes at 90% funding. Um, I think that people are crying out for this sort of thing anyway, but after this COVID situation, seeing so many families, it's just still unbelievable, even with the traffic increase the last two weeks, to see so many kids, um, families, people out that I've never seen out before at all times of the day and night. And these types of projects are crucial. We've all said that we want 
this sort of thing happening, the safer speeds, I think was unanimous, the uh, Queen Street unanimous, I think that um, what we I think we all supported safety as the top priority through the GPS and through Auckland Transport a couple of years ago. So this is the, the crucial types of projects we should be seeing across our communities. The fact that some of them are trials and tests and not spending a ton uh, ripping up roads is a good thing. If there are um, good longer term solutions, we should be taking them up too. But I just want to uh, congratulate everyone for coming up with this pretty quickly, didn't have a long time frame, and I think we should just um, work hard to support the people who are going to be much safer uh, for this, especially around schools and town centres and those rural roads where we do see the high instances of deaths and serious injuries. But also we need people um, at this time to be out of their cars and um, not using public transport if they don't need to, so this is another step forward for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Count Councillor Tracy Mulholland. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say, uh, Councillor Bartley, you fabulous wahini tower. I am so grateful to you for bringing this to my attention. And I want to acknowledge the other councillors who have also raised the matter of um, consultation. Thank you, Your Worship, for bringing it to the attention of staff. My understanding is that actually, our role in terms of representing our community, that we support, and I have always supported Auckland Transport, and they would know that um, as a chair and through many challenges. So um, I support the staff. I do not support the process in terms of consultation, but I understand what has occurred. Now, a month is a very long time to have an opportunity to contact 12 councillors. So again, I want to acknowledge Councillor Bartley. Um, unfortunately, I do not agree on the way that this has occurred for the project and the phone, whilst I never would agree to that area, which I've been there for 28 years and worked on that development in that town centre and in the area. Um, I certainly do not agree with 50Ks. I would have liked to have had a discussion with the team in terms of the transit-oriented de development project. And I worked on the 2010-2030 Newland Urban Plan. Um, I do agree with Councillor Darby with regards to talking about the bigger bang for the buck, and that's verbatim. So I think his thinking on that was very good because it is a way of working. Um, I acknowledge that I received a, call, a text message, actually, from um, the AT chair in preference, it would have been a call from the staff. So I would like to, um, and I've been considering whether I would support this or not, but I do support my other councillors and I've been in touch with a number of councillors over this matter, so I do support them. I would have had a preference for the foe for a project that I've worked on for a number of years on safety that has caused a number of people to be anxious and concerned and actually there's been uh, <laughs> disputes with violence around uh, the Blockhouse Bay School and the issues of safety. And I would have loved the opportunity to work alongside the um, Auckland Transport team on that. So I'm just wondering if there is an opportunity. And whilst I get that timing is a matter, timing is a matter for me too on this, if the staff would be able to um, at least give me a call and talk through this. Um, and I have noted another couple of councillors have talked about the lack of information, I would also like the opportunity, if it's possible, and I believe it should be, thanks, Your Worship, to have the staff talk through um, actions. So I will support this because of my other colleagues and the, the, their level of um, support of the projects going on in the areas, but this one actually <laughs> for the foe just missed the point. So could I have some answers from AT or the appropriate staff and acknowledging certainly, you know, they're excited about the work and good on them and great to get the funding from government if we do. So if we could have a reply from uh, staff on that, I presume that Councillor Mulholland will be able to promote the Blockhouse Bay project as something for round two, but could you please confirm that? Um, certainly in terms of round two, yes, um, uh, Councillor Mulholland is welcome to, to do that, to put forward a project, as are uh, other councillors. 
um, uh, in terms of uh, the round one project, the, um, the project in New Lynn, um, I better defer to AT on that one, uh, but I presume they'll be able to um, uh, give the councillor uh, 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 an update on that. Yeah, so regarding the New Lynn project, um, I can uh, provide a little bit more information on that. So yeah, um, the purpose of that project is to look at the shared space, shared, uh, space environment and try and improve that. Um, my understanding is that the project isn't really operating as a, as a shared space environment as it was originally intended. So this, this application is, is looking to address that and looking at uh, treatments to, to trial and test to kind of um, make, that, make that space um, more pedestrian friendly. Um, yeah. Dimitri, to that, Greg, can we take this offline? Is that possible, please? Yeah, um, I, I, I was going to suggest that, uh, yeah. Councillor, because yeah. otherwise, um, if it we go through on. each project, um, yeah. we'll, we will be here at 7 o'clock tonight. If, if, um, if you could have a commitment that the staff will respond and we can have a conversation, I would be grateful. Yeah, thanks, Greg. If you could take that up directly with Councillor Mulholland and on the uh, the, the, the further suggestion that she has for the project around uh, Blockhouse Bay School, we'd be very grateful for that. Um, thank you. Councillor Daniel Newman. Oh, yes. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, no, I just need to uh, foreshadow that I'll need to leave the meeting after this item. I've got another point. I'm sorry. Um, look, just a quick one. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Chair, um, 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 Adrian Young-Cooper. I, I think that... Uh, in terms of governance to governance, uh, her participation really is a good a good thing, and and I really was grateful for her fronting this item today. Um, my ward, obviously, uh, hopefully we can get some projects up in round two. Um, one of the things that I would like to understand, and we can take this offline, is is there is a uh, 90%, so 10% has to be found somewhere. I actually am very nervous about an expectation that maybe the local boards will help to fund this um, from the gap because those local boards are really trying to to sweat and squeeze um, every last drop so that they can get their existing projects over the line if we're asking for them to make contributions to fund new projects that they didn't have within their scope or not necessarily within the immediate timing of, of their priorities. Um, you know, it might not seem like much, but for local boards that could be quite significant. So I think when we work through um, how the criteria works for round two, um, we'll need to work a way in which we can ensure that um, these are these good local local transform projects can occur, uh, but in a way which doesn't uh, impose additional costs on the local board if possible. So I'll take those, I'd I'll, I'll like to have a conversation offline, thanks. Uh, thank you, Councillor, that's a good point. Um, you know, we never look a gift horse in the mouth and if somebody's going to meet 90% of the project, it's quite attractive. But if it is a million dollar project, it still means that we've got to find the $100,000 and we've all just come out of a, a meeting yesterday where we understand what the financial pressures on Council were. So they, those, those things need to be factored in. Uh, Councillor Greg Sayers. Oh, thank you, Worship. I'll be very brief. I just want to comment that I'll be voting in support of the recommendation. I want to also acknowledge as other councils have done the, um, the contact from the Chair of Auckland uh, Transport, which I received last night. So thank you, Adrian Young-Cooper, and also Councillor Bartley for your, for your communication via the email. Much appreciated. You know, um, this is a good news story in a difficult environment. And I'm also very pleased to hear that the local boards will be fully engaged in the process. So uh, thank you very much, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Desley Simpson. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Look, I've got some concerns or just a question I want to ask to Auckland Transport around um, the uh, first two city centre projects. Um, the reason for my concern is I understand that it's gone to uh, the ward councillor. But of course, the city centre is, is, whilst it's a really important backyard for um, for that ward, it is also accessed by people that do not necessarily live in the city centre. And um, when we talked about potentially uh, maybe closing Queen Street and whatever, this is all before COVID-19, and Auckland Transport did say to us that they would need probably, you know, 12 months to figure out how all that would work. 
So my question really is, in light of the fact that this, if, the, if we were to be successful, um, it would sort of happen in the next six to 12 months, um, do we have confidence from Auckland Transport that they can handle um, the public transport element um, around if this project worked, for example, in the second bullet point, the Queen Street one, and that um, potentially people will be using their cars a bit more until they have confidence to go back to public transport, and will that affect the um, transport movements for the city in general, or the central city in general? Thank you. Auckland Transport would like to comment. Yeah, um, hi. Uh, so just regarding the Queen Street question, um, that's quite a technical um, question in terms of our project. What I will do is I'll follow up with the project team and get them to contact you directly uh, regarding that Queen Street question, if that's okay? Yep, thank you. Thank you, Craig. I, think I only got every second word to that. Um, oh. So my question then, the next question might go to you. If I had concerns about some of the projects in A, but I obviously, um, not obviously, but I did strongly support others. How would, can I just note my concerns haven't been addressed on a couple of projects and just note that or? I think you can note your concern. I think uh, there'll be, you know, not everybody will support uh, each of these projects 100%, but they don't want to vote against things that their colleagues might particularly want in their areas. Uh, I, I suggested also maybe you take offline, and it was Greg's answer to you that you might not have heard clearly, uh, that he takes offline a, a discussion with you uh, about your concerns about Queen Street or Cook Street. Yeah. Um, sorry, my, set, my, my little thing says your device is causing poor audio quality. I'm only hearing every second voice, so I'll text Sandra. Thank you. Okay. Is that my device that's causing the problem? Well, you no. were, it was good then. <laughs> it just <Okay>. goes in <laughs> and out. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, can I just throw a question into Auckland Transport? Um, the 10% the funding, um, there are three potential sources for that, um, Auckland Transport, Auckland Council or the local board. Um, is Auckland Transport in a position to uh, put money into this area, uh, given the, the pressures that all of us are under? Um, yes, for these projects, um, because they're largely uh, components of, of things that were in train anyway, um, yeah, then do, do we have uh, available budget for these to, to come out of Auckland Transport funds? Uh, we're not expecting local board funds or additional council funds for for this uh, round one set of projects. Um, round two, uh, maybe a different story uh, where we get proposals that are currently unbudgeted. I think that's where we could hit some of the challenge. Okay, I think that's an important point for people to understand, and I think that councillors and local board members will be very pleased, at least on the assurance uh, on round one. So thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Sharon Stewart. Thank you. Yes, I have to agree with um, Councillor Simpson about Queen Street. I don't think all of us were quite as supportive as, as um, what was made out. Um, I think there's a few more questions, and it's, it's more... Queen Street's really used more regionally and um, and with businesses. So I, I, I think, you know, there's still a lot of questions that need to be addressed with, with that particular part of the project. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor, for putting uh, your view on the record there. Um, IMSB Chair, David Taipari. No, no, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wayne Walker. Uh, just a few quick comments, uh, Phil. Uh, no particular order, uh, making the assumption that, um, that these particular projects are a fit with um, travel plans for, for schools where that's relevant. Um, I also share the concerns that uh, Councillor Simpson has raised about Queen Street and for that matter any other areas where businesses are affected because they're doing it really hard right now. So if something's going to happen, it needs to demonstrate a positive business impact as well as um, anything around um, mobility. Uh, 
I've just got a question I can possibly get the answer offline, and that is that does this type of project also cover possibilities around uh, walkways, uh, for example, that might meet walking and cycling? And can it also cover off travel demand measures like trip diaries and, and uh, the like that can help to get people out of cars? Thank you. Thank you. Look, we'll just see if staff can answer those uh, questions for you, Councillor Walker. Um, uh, one of the staff members online like to uh, hazard a guess at the answer to that question. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Robert here. And certainly the, the first part of your question, walkways, I think we've had clarification from NZTA that, that yes, um, they can be covered um, by this. Um, more innovative uh, type things that you, you've talked about, um, I think you mentioned travel diaries. Um, uh, I don't know about that thing specifically, about travel diaries specifically, but certainly the, the, the fund is set up to be very flexible um, and they have talked about, for example, funding events, events that might help get people out and join their neighbourhoods. So um, I think that gives you an indication of the, the broad-minded approach that NZTA is taking to the application of this fund. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Robert. Robert. Uh, Councillor John Watson. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of quick uh, remarks. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a useful start, and I certainly look forward to the 25th of May for um, for the second round. Um, and, and and thank uh, the new uh, councillor for Waitemata with the support that will be coming for the farcical situation at Otea Valley Road, um, which serves, of course, the biggest park and ride in Auckland. So any uh, any safe provision and safe and modest and practical provision of a of a cycling route there would be would be very welcome come uh, 25th of May, Mr. Mayor. So I'm glad I've got one vote already. That's great. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Councillor, for that comment and the spirit in which it was made. Uh, Councillor Paul Young. No, thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, look, that's great. Um, now, the question is, uh, is there a, a request for a vote on division, or can I take it that we can vote on this on the voices with, with noting? Do it on the voices. Okay. I put my notes through to Sandra, Your Worship. Okay. No, that's good. Um, uh, that I'll comment is been... through to Your Worship. Yep. So that's, uh, that's good. Councillor Mulholland, Councillor Simpson, and Councillor Stewart, I think. Um, um, right. So add, um, add Walker to that. Okay. Um, once again, um, acknowledge uh, Councillor Bartley's positive construction, and can I also pick up the um, comments about um, it's good to have the chair of um, a CCO board uh, able to spend the time to to, to talk to us on this. That uh, that was also very useful. So I'll put the vote on. Voices. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, right. no. Uh, I declare uh, that carried. Right, we um, let's see if we can motor through uh, what we have uh, remaining here.